A terrorism arrest involving a bomb plot targeting tonight's Christmas tree lighting ceremony at Pioneer Courthouse Square. The night team Scott Burton is standing by live at Pioneer Courthouse Square with details that can really only be described as chilling. Scott, are you there with us? Steph, this is a story that is still clearly developing. We've learned the FBI has arrested a naturalized U.S. citizen from Somalia who has been living in Corvallis. He was taken into custody in connection with a plot to detonate a car bomb at tonight's Christmas tree lighting. According to the U.S. Attorney's Office, 19-year-old Mohammed Osman Mohammed was arrested just before 6 tonight after he tried to detonate what he believed to be a van full of explosives. In an affidavit filed in connection with the case, FBI agents allege Mohammed mailed bomb components to undercover federal agents whom he thought to be violent jihadists. This past summer, he allegedly traveled to a remote Lincoln County location where he tried to detonate, where he thought he did in fact detonate. A backpack bomb is a trial run. Tonight's arrest came at a parking lot near Union Station where Muhammad is accused of allegedly trying to detonate the van bomb using a cell phone. This winter... Winter season, the FBI celebrates. A reason, the arrest of a potential terrorist. But a little something is wrong with this picture. Over the 18 months, they cultivated him. The alleged plotter is a teenager. The bomb he planted, a fake, and the FBI allegedly manipulated him into committing a crime. Entrapment is not legal. Entrapment is getting someone to do something that they wouldn't normally do. The guy named Muhammad had his emails tracked by authorities while they waited for the right time to get him to act against U.S. national security. Well, the FBI, as Dave said, with him every step of the way because he started since he was 15 years old. Four years, X amount of money, and efforts from the FBI later, the sting mission comes to a close. The 19-year-old is accused of plotting to blow up a Christmas tree in Portland, Oregon. The language used against him in FBI records is all too familiar to the sensitive American ear. And even though the device was uh, fake, fear spreads like bacteria. The threat was very, very real. Media images were quick to portray what could have and would have happened had the bomb been real. Becoming yet again not a watchdog, but an echoing voice of authorities. A lot of this terrorism stuff, I think it is kind of embarrassing for most of the media, the way the FBI's official word on whatever is just taken as the truth. But the obvious truth to some is what's not addressed at all. When it comes to national security and terrorism, it just sort of stops all conversation. It's chilling conversation. You immediately assume, I want to be protected, the FBI will protect me, and, and, and therefore, whatever it says is true, when often it isn't. It's hard to defend against this, even when there's an obvious element of entrapment. When officials arrest a man for something they themselves convinced him to do. When someone brings in information that someone might want to commit a terrorist activity. They have to make sure that it was the individual's idea and not someone else's idea or, or someone connected with the government's idea. The case dubbed the Christmas tree plotter is far from the first to bring to light the practice of entrapment in the U.S. Convincing, pursuing, and tricking the eventually accused has become systematic according to some. And they can come after you and they can manufacture crimes against you and they can uh, make up a whole case and put you through a whole thing and eventually if they can persuade a jury that this manufactured case is valid you can go away to jail for a very long time and with the case being built against Mohammed not just by officials but by the media too what would have been a catastrophic event at this Christmas tree lighting the destiny of the US citizen turned plotter with a little help from the FBI seems clear too the problem is that, you know, in court cases, people, juries, believe the FBI. They are the FBI. They've been, you know, we've been indoctrinated to believe that the FBI can do no wrong. Of course, there are many, many cases where the FBI has done a lot of wrong. The role of law enforcement is to catch the bad guys so that the good guys feel safer. But when criminals are not just caught by officials, but also created, the idea of national security becomes just as made up as the means of reaching it. I'm Stacey Shurkina, RT. 
Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Tuesday, November 30th, 2010, and I'm Darko. Uh, new listeners, please uh, visit my website, www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Uh, you can subscribe to all the videos that are posted. They'll go right to your email. Um, you get to learn a little bit more about me. And um, we're just going to cut into this video right away. Uh, this is the War on Terror, Liberty, Sovereignty. Uh, you just uh, basically saw how this whole uh, Christmas Day, or another Christmas Day bomber, right? That's how you know it's a patsy, really, right? How it's a big scam, this uh, war on terror scam. It's a war of terror, a reign of terror. Um, and it's not the first time it's been done by governments. It's been done for hundreds of years, uh, where you can basically just, uh, anybody that dissents or disagrees with what's going on uh, can basically basically round up and uh, detained and uh, tortured and uh, for no apparent charge at all without even being, being charged and um, be held indefinitely. So, and it's all in the name of War on Terror, like I said, which is a scam. So, it says here, defense uh, friends say Oregon bomb plot suspect was set up. Obvious, you know, that was pretty obvious after watching those two videos. So, but it goes on here and it talks about a friend uh, that uh, knew this individual. Go down here, it says outside the courtroom, a man who played basketball with Muhammad said the teenager wouldn't have gotten involved in the plot without encouragement from the FBI. Quote, if you talk with someone long enough, they'll be convinced they need to do something, said 20-year-old uh, Mahid Al Nasser. And um, so the whole point of covering this is what, it's just to uh, hopefully get those people out there who aren't savvy uh, to this information or this type of information or these ideas uh, to kind of, you know, uh, you can see for yourself. You can see that, that uh, all of this is basically to take away your rights, your freedoms. And um, like that woman said, you know, oh, the FBI was created to keep, to make people feel safe. Well, yeah, you can feel safe, but uh, your uh, safety in itself is an illusion. You're never really safe. All you can do is really look out for yourself, defend yourself. And the only person that can do that the best is you. So said, uh, this is a nice little propaganda piece that was put out there. Oregon bomb plot suspect wanted spectacular show. So, and if you're not aware, uh, last year the Christmas Day bomber, um, Patsy, he was a Patsy. He was working for intelligence agencies, and they knew that, and they withheld that information until uh, it finally uh, enough people were saying this isn't right. And then there was those two individuals, that couple, they were, just happened to be lawyers, um, that saw that he was uh, escorted uh, without a visa, and uh, he was escorted by that sharp-dressed man, uh, possibly intelligence agency, the Indian man, and uh, and that's how he was able to get onto that flight. And he was working for FBI and intelligence agencies. So, just uh, and what happened after that? Well, the the body scanners, the groping, and the full pat downs, all because of that. So you see, they tried to do all of this on a, a false pretenses. So there is a there is a reason to look back. People always want to look forward. Let's not look back. No, let's look back and let's see the crimes and the frauds that were committed. Chip detainees, Iran mega missile, and more in latest WikiLeaks. And uh, it goes on here and it says, uh, King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia told a senior White House official to consider surgically implanting homing devices under Guantanamo Bay detainees' skin. So see, after you're falsely incriminated, uh, through entrapment by the federal government, then they're going to chip you. They're going to put a, a chip in you and throw you in, the, you know, like a little FEMA camp and torture you, all in the name of saving the rest of the sheep. Shocking cable, U.S. Saudi donors are chief financiers of al Qaeda. A quick inside or aside in the New York Times article about a leaked diplomatic uh, cables is sure to spark renewed interest about the role of the U.S. biggest ally in the Gulf supporting terrorism goes on and says, in their wide-ranging pre of the leaked cables, Times reporter Scott Shane and Andrew Ledrin mentioned in passing a key details from one of the diplomatic dispatches, quote, Saudi uh, donors remain the chief financiers of Sunni militant groups like Al-Qaeda. So more evidence there for those little um, skeptics or deniers. It says here, Chinese passports enter electronic era. Printing of China's uh, first electronic passports began Friday in Shanghai with the production of official passports containing microchip information. And if you're a slave here in the corporation of the United States, you should know that uh, your little passport also has a little tracking device in there, an RFID chip. So, um, and next one up is the police are the public, the public are the police. Well, that sounds very fascist, doesn't it? 
Well, it is. Realtors and police officers from across the lower mainland gathered recently to celebrate 11 years of partnership through the Realty Watch program. The program highlights the critical role that relationships between police and realtors can play in making our communities safer, according to the an RCMP leader in crime prevention. The Reality Watch program is both unique and powerful, can trigger almost an instantaneous mobilization of 13,000 professionals who are also dedicated and eager citizens, eager slaves, willing to engage the police in support of broader community needs. In other words, they're going to sell you out. They're going to be little communists communist and little snitches. He says, we know policing today is about community building, about communitarianism, and fostering strong connections. That's like the fusion centers. That's uh, basically taking your local state uh a local, state, and federal, and combining them all into a fusion center, sharing of information and uh, providing all these uh, smaller localized governments with a bunch of federal cash uh, to uh, install surveillance cameras, beef up their cars so they look like the Batmobile and whatnot. We're going to keep moving on here. Pentagon military actively wargaming large-scale economic breakdown and civil unrest. This is actually from the 22nd, but I figured it was important to cover, and I haven't had a chance. The majority of Americans believe that recent government intervention into financial markets, the economy, and corporate insolvency has reversed the economic downturn, which was described by former Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson as being, quote, on the brink in 2008. That's when they threatened Congress with martial law if they didn't pass it. The stimulus, bailouts, and unrelenting quantitative easing, that means printing of money. They bought treasury bonds. They're going to treasury bonds. That's what they might as well be, right? That's pretty much the printing of money, which equals inflation. By the Federal Reserve, have thus, thus far been perceived as having averted the further erosion of the U.S. real estate and equities market. And... Uh, it goes down here and it basically says, if we prevented economic collapse and avoided the depression, many feared, according to Obama, inquiring minds are asking why the Pentagon and U.S. military are actively and aggressively engaging in planning responsive active, or actions to large-scale economic breakdown and civil unrest scenarios. And if you read this, this is from a CNBC video report. It says, um, according to the Army, or according to the report, the Army has spent time on financial market trading floors with J.P. Morgan and others in hopes that they can learn more about how the financial and economic attack may occur. Ooh, ever since the crash of 2008, the Defense Intelligence Establishment has really been paying a lot of attention to global markets and how they can serve as a threat to U.S. national security interests. That's all pretty much the highlight of that. At one upcoming seminar next month, they're taking a look at a lot of the issues. So I've covered that before. The government is doing uh, drills. They're, car- they're carrying out drills where they have these little, um, uh, what, what we had in the Marine Corps in Camp Pendleton, these little fake towns that you go through uh, with uh, your own little squad and you go house to house and that. And, um, and that's basically what they're training, except this time they're training against protesters, people rioting on the streets for food. And they had like little things and uh, uh, little signs in these fake houses, like uh, ooh, a liquor store or uh, um, or uh, uh, a strip club. You know, things that would be associated with usually uh, um, a less uh, affluent neighborhood. I guess you can put it. U.S. South Korea launch war games in Tens- uh, Yellow Sea. This is from two days ago. U.S. Korea start war games. And China proposed an emergency meeting amid escalating Korean tensions. Those are not war games, guys. Those are the real deal. So, <clears throat> coalition ramps up airway air war over Afghanistan, once uh, sharply curtailed because of complaints over civilian casualties. U.S. and NATO forces have ramped up their air war in Afghanistan since the summer. Coalition aircraft dropped 1,000 bombs and missiles in October one of the highest monthly totals of the nine-year war. Despite large increases in sorties and weapons fired, the number of civilians killed in air operations is slightly down this year, NATO officials say, because of the coalition restrictions on engaging the surgeons. Well, that's really nice, because you know what? All I did is cover nothing but civilian deaths. And uh, they're still dying over there on a false pretense, so I don't care if it's less or not. It's still morally wrong. U.S.-led forces kill F- ex-Afghan governor. The U.S.-led foreign forces have killed a former Afghan governor and arrested six members of his family in an attack in southern uh, Helmand province. And I'm sure ma- mo- the majority of those Afghans actually support that individual. That's why they're taking them out. Afghan gunmen had no criminal background. Yeah, they do that just like in Haiti. The Haiti people actually like their, their uh, previous leaders, so they had to get rid of them and, and take them out in a coup. That was backed by most likely the CIA. Uh, please join me in this uh, part two of War on Terror, Liberty, uh, and Sovereignty News. Uh, the tyranny never ends. So please join me with Global Government News. I'm Darko. Thank you.